Hachette Audio presents The Crossing, written by Michael Connolly, read by Titus Welliver. Dedication in memory of Simon Christensen. April Fool's Day. Ellis and Long were four car lengths behind the motorcycle on Ventura Boulevard. They were eastbound, coming up to the big curve where the road would turn south and head down through the pass into Hollywood. Ellis was behind the wheel, where he preferred to be, even though he was the senior partner and could dictate to Long who drove and who rode shotgun. Long was looking down at the screen on his phone, staring at the video feed, watching over what they called their investments. The car felt good. It felt strong. There was a little play in the wheel. Ellis felt solidly in control. He saw an opening in the right lane and pushed his foot down. The car jumped forward. Long looked up. What are you doing? Getting rid of a problem. What? Before it's a problem. He had caught up and was now riding next to the motorcycle. He glanced over and saw the rider's black boots and the orange flames painted on the gas tank. The flames matched the color of the Camaro. He pulled a few feet ahead, and as the road curved right, he allowed the car to drift into the left lane, following the laws of centrifugal force. He heard the rider yell. He kicked at the side of the car, and then gunned it to try to move ahead. That was his mistake. He should have braked and bailed, but he tried to gun his way out of it. Ellis was ready for the move and pinned the accelerator. The Camaro surged into the left lane, completing the cutoff. Ellis heard brakes squeal and a long sustained blast of a car horn as the motorcycle went into the oncoming traffic lanes. Then he heard the high pitched scraping of steel and the inevitable impact of metal against metal. Ellis smiled and kept going. Chapter One It was a Friday morning and the smart people had already taken off for the weekend. This made traffic into downtown a breeze, and Harry Bosch got to the courthouse early. Rather than wait for Mickey Haller on the front steps where they had agreed to meet, he decided to look for his lawyer inside the monolithic structure that covered half a block of space, 19 floors into the air. But the search for Haller would not be as difficult as the size of the building suggested. After clearing the lobby metal detector, a new experience for him, Bosch took an elevator up to 15, and started checking courtrooms and using the stairs to work his way down. Most of the courtrooms assigned to criminal cases were on floors 9 through 15. Bosch knew this because of the time he'd spent in those courtrooms over the last 30 years. He found Haller in Department 120 on the 13th floor. Court was in session, but there was no jury. Haller had told Bosch he had a motion hearing that would finish by their lunchtime appointment. Harry slipped onto a bench in the back of the public gallery and watched as Haller questioned a uniformed Los Angeles police officer on the witness stand. Bosch had missed the preliminaries, but not the meat of Haller's examination of the officer. Officer Sanchez, what I would like you to do now is go through the steps that led to your arresting Mr. Hannigan on December 11th of last year, Haller said. Why don't we start with what your assignment was that day? Sanchez took a moment to compose an answer to what seemed to be a routine question. Bosch noticed that he had three hash marks on his sleeve, one for every five years with the department. Fifteen years was a lot of experience, and that told Bosch that Sanchez would be very wary of Haller, as well as skilled at giving answers more helpful to the prosecution than the defense. My partner and I were on routine patrol in 77th Street Division, Sanchez said. We happened to be traveling westbound on Florence Avenue at the time of this incident. And Mr. Hennigan was also traveling on Florence Avenue? Yes, that's correct. Which direction was he going? He was also going west. His car was directly in front of us. Okay, and then what happened? We came to a red light at Normandy, and Mr. Hennigan came to a stop, and then we stopped behind him. Mr. Hennigan engaged his right turn signal, and then he turned right to go northbound on Normandy. Normandy. 